St. John the Evangelist Catholic Church in Jackson, Michigan proudly presents one of its Faith Formation Discipleship series, Catholicism 201, Diving Deeper into All Things Catholic, Praying the Parish Forward, Insights and Practice of Intercessory Prayer. I will be your host, Todd Gale. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, my friends. Welcome back. Let's pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Christ, we ask for you to be with us powerfully in this time, and I ask for you please to just move deeply into folks, into their hearts, into their minds, into their soul, and lift them up to be more and more like you. We love you and praise you. And the people said, Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, huge, huge, huge. Relationship gives us our identity, and our identity gives us our mission. And our mission is ultimately to pray. That's a huge part of what we're called to do and what we should be doing. Now, this is really basic. Most of you already know this, but it's incredibly deep. Okay, we can mine this forever. So our relationship with God, all people are created in the what? Image and likeness of God. So at first, our relationship with God is creator to creature, right? He's the creator, we're the creature. Creator and creation is like a potter and a pot. It's like the painter and the painting. They're very lopsided relationships where one is total control over everything and the other is receiving, but it's not very independent. It's just a piece of work. Amen? But that's not us. That's not all we are. Later, God revealed himself to Moses and he warmly calls Moses his friend. Imagine that. A friend of the creator. But then Jesus comes along and he's talking to the disciples and he says, Blessed are the pure of heart. They shall be called children of God. And then he says, Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Both of these are in Matthew chapter 5. Now this changes things. We're not just a creator to a creation. We're a child relating to a father. Now, I want you to think about this. Again, this, this is simple. It might sound goofy. Um, but this was kind of powerful when I, when I thought about this. A father dog has a dog child, right? Is that surprising? A, a father duck has a duck child. Who would have thought that? And a father giraffe has a giraffe child. What does a father... God have as a child? Well, some would say he has us. God is our father. But in reality, the only begotten son of God is Jesus. He's, he's the only one eternally God. He is son in a bigger way, in a, in a, in a, in a much uh, broader way than we are. As children, he was not made by the Father. God the Son, Jesus, is God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. But then the Son joined his godliness to us as a human, right? His identity is born from his relationship with the Father. He is son because God the Father is Father. And then he becomes one of us. And by connecting to us, he links us up 
with God. He links up divinity and humanity. He's the go-between. He's the intercessor. And we humans, we are not begotten. We're not eternally God, right? We had a starting point. We're, we're human from God, human from light, human from true God, made, not begotten. So how dare we call God our Father? How can we be his children when we're not the same nature as God? Nowhere near the same level as God. We are not part of his biological family, so to speak. Well, St. Paul and the church have always clearly taught that we're adopted as sons and daughters. We are legally part of the covenant family. We are brought into the life of God. And that changes everything. Because Jesus says, you shall know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. That's in John chapter 14. How is he in us? How, how is the God of the universe in us through the Holy Spirit that comes to live in our soul? And mostly through the sacraments and then fed by the sacraments. St. Paul writes to the Galatians, you're no more a servant, you're a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. We are the heir of God. We inherit what God the Father wants to give us. What does an heir receive? Everything the Father wants to give. And what does the Father want to give? St. Paul says he wants to give us all the fullness of God. That's in Ephesians chapter 3. All the fullness of God. He wants to become you so that your identity is to become a little Christ. Right? The Catechism says in paragraph 795, Christ and his church together make up the whole Christ, the Christus totus. The church is one with Christ. The saints are acutely aware of this unity. Let us rejoice and give thanks that we have become not only Christians, but Christ himself. Right? Theologians call this divinization or theosis or deification. And in, in, uh, in the spiritual terms, it's the spiritual union. It's the mystical marriage to Christ. We don't deserve it. We don't earn it. We can't make it. We can't cause it. We can only receive it. We can only cooperate with it. We have to be humble and pure, poor in spirit and weeping over our sin and pure of heart, right? The Beatitudes, it's all God's work. He does it all. And that's where we find our true identity when we are allowed to take part of God's divinity. St. Peter says we are partakers of the divine nature. That is the true you. That's what Jesus has done for us. And it's time to stop living a small life. God dwells in us. And when our free will chooses to live more and more like Jesus, we assent to be like him. We become more and more like him. And this is a process. This is a lifetime. We are becoming like Christ. And the amazing thing is if you're a believer, if you've, if you've given your life to him, especially if you've been baptized, if you've received him in the Eucharist, Christ's life is already within us. We're already in the kingdom. We just have to act like it. Now, if you're like me, I'm saying, you're saying it's a long way from being perfect like the Father. How can I dare say that? Well, I can dare say that because Jesus says it. I am in you. You are in me.
Oh, man. Amen. Do you feel like you're as perfect as Christ? Look, we do not have to sin. We don't have to sin anymore. We can be perfect as the Father is perfect. We have the free will and we have the power within us to stop sinning. We do not have a sin nature anymore. It's been washed away in baptism. It's been washed away by the blood of Christ. Our nature has been changed. We don't have the fallen nature of Adam and Eve anymore. We've been given a new nature. We are born again, born from above. So we don't have a sin nature anymore, but we have a sin habit. And we want to keep going back to what we know. We're not hopeless. We're not helpless. We have all the gifts that God has offered us. God has dignified us with himself, right? Jesus says, live my life. Oh my goodness. When we know who we are and we know whose we are, we know how God has chosen us to live, right? So I've got a little um, practice for you to do. This is one of many ways to pray scripture. Um, you replace the words, and in, in especially this works really well in an epistle written by either Paul or, or John or one of the other epistle writers in the New Testament. And replace the words in it so that it's not just written out to you or to those in Rome. Put your name in it. It's, instead of it saying you, you say my and I and insert your name. Ask the Lord, what do you want to tell me, Lord? What do you want me to know from this, Lord? What are you trying to reveal to me? Then take some time and ponder this. Take a, a passage of scripture and put it in first person. So this is from Ephesians chapter one. We would say, Blessed be the God and Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed me in Christ with every spiritual blessing, even as he chose me and him before the foundation of the world, that I should be holy and blameless. Right? So turn it towards you. Now, this is not a, a pride-making machine. This is not vanity. This is to understand our identity, but to understand it with humility. We'll talk more about that again. Right? This is just laying a foundation for identity. But even take it a step further and put your name in there. So if my name were Frank, I would say, Blessed be God and the Father of Frank, of Frank's Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed Frank in Christ with every spiritual blessing, even as he chose Frank in him before the foundation of the world, that Frank should be holy and blameless. He destined Frank in love to be his son. Right? You get that? Read first the first chapter of Ephesians. It's beautiful. It's all about identity. Ask the Lord what he wants to teach you. Right? What does the Lord want you to know? Isn't that beautiful? Um, next time we'll, we'll start talking about intercessory prayer and, and, and dig in a little deeper. Amen. I hope you find this edifying. I hope you find the Lord consoling. And I hope you're growing closer and closer to Christ. All glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you for joining me.
Thank you, friends, for joining us with this episode of Praying the Parish Forward.